Uh, well, Andy, here we is again. Say hello to everybody. Okay, Amos. Hello, everybody. And the three of us is all happy to see you again. Amos, me, and New Rinso. Show with Lou Lubin, Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Alan Reed, Leo Cleary, Bill Johnstone, Jeff Alexander's music, and radio's all time favorites, Amos and Andy. Yes, sir, the Amos and Andy Show brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Rinso, the only soap that contains sodium. That's why Rinso gets your clothes whiter and brighter than new. Rinso white, Rinso bright, Rinso new. Happy little wash day song. We all know that Amos and Andy's friend, the kingfish, is named George Stevens. Well, it seems that in uptown New York, there is another and much younger George Stevens. And judging from a conversation going on at a local draft board, it appears that a rather serious mistake is about to result. Mr. Walters, I see that draft notice we sent out to George Stevens came back marked address unknown. Yes, but the post office just located Stevens' present address for us. Oh, good. According to their records, George Stevens has been getting his mail at the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. That's over on Lenox Avenue. I notice here from his record that he's 23 years old, in excellent physical condition, and unmarried. Fine. (laughs) Better send the notice out special delivery. According to our quota, George Stevens must be in the Army by the middle of the month. Well, come in, brother. What you doing down here at the Lodge Hall? Well, you know me, Kingfish. I can't stand being idle. Come 11.30 in the morning, I just got to get out of bed. That's... Yeah, nothing like getting out of bed early and chirping back at the bluebird. Yeah. Sit down, son. I'm just going over the mail here. Yeah? What's in there? Anything? Yeah, oh, just the usual stuff. Bills, ads, and... Uh, wait a minute. What's this here? Here's a letter from the United States government. Hmm. Wonder what to write me about. Maybe they send you a refund on your income tax. <laughs> oh, I don't think so, Andy. Before you happen to read or something, you got to fund them something in the first place. <laughs> I ain't funded them nothing in years. Hey, look what it say up in the corner there under United States government. War Department. Hmm. That department is all right, but that W-A-R. Boy, there is a mean arrangement of letters, all right. <laughs> uh, maybe they want us, uh, say, that's about it. The woman for air raid warden again. Still got my old helmet at home, you know. Sapphire done planted to drain him in the thing, but I can dump the dirt out of that and put it on my head, you know. <laughs> yeah, but the only thing, didn't the air raiders discharge you undishonorably last time? Well, I had a tough break, and the Sapphire was hollering at me one night, and I didn't hear the siren. <laughs> oh, he said, if you really want to alert the neighborhood, they ought to tie her to a lamppost. Eh? <laughs> yeah, you said it. She can outscreech anything they done invented up to now. Yeah. Say, Kingfish... You don't think the War Department wants you uh, to come in the... Uh... No, Andy, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't dare say an awful word like that now. Just, just... <laughs> Kingfish, I think you ought to open up that letter. Right. Yeah, now, let's just ease the thing out the envelope gently here now. Yeah, well, hurry up and read it, Kingfish. Yeah, take it easy there now. You know, Andy, there's two ways to read a letter. Fast and slow. Mm. And this is the kind of letter you got to sneak up on like a water moccasin. <laughs> yeah, these government letters can really fang you all right. Yeah. Now, I want you to lay the letter face down on the desk. Then I'm going to put my head sideways down on the desk here. And I want you to start lifting up one corner of the letter gradual. <laughs> so it won't hit me all at once here, you see. Uh, like this? Mm, that's right. Mm, take it easy now. Okay, Anna. Lift it a little higher. Mm-hmm. A little higher. Yeah. Hold it. <laughs> you see something? Yeah, there's a word coming up there now. <laughs> what is that? Greetings. <laughs> Greetings? Yeah, too early for Christmas, too, in it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't see no holly on that thing, neither. 
Well, look, Andy, my heart is palpitating here. Give me the letter. Let me see here. Oh, me, Andy. It's true. The army is going to induct you, man. Look at here. Oh, Kingfish, this must be a mistake. I know they've been digging into the mothball fleet, but I don't think they're going to drag out no barge like you. Yeah, that's right, Andy. I'm too old. This whole thing must be a mistake. I just worry about nothing here. Ha, ha. Yeah, them want an old man like you. Ha, ha. Yeah, ha, ha. Ha. You know, Andy, these ha-has ain't as jovial as they should be. You know? Oh, listen, Kingfish, I guarantee that they don't want you. You ain't got nothing to worry about. The thing you do is call them up and tell them that they made a mistake. Yeah, that's right, Andrew. Wait a minute, I got the telephone number right here on the letter here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll relieve my mind here. That's exactly what I do. I wonder how they make a mistake like this. Oh, they just permiss do the thing, you know. And, uh, wait a minute. Uh, hello? Uh, draft board? Uh, this is George Stephen. I uh, just want to tell you a funny thing that happened. I got a draft notice from you this morning, and you done made a mistake. Uh, what's that? Hold the phone. <laughs> What'd he say? He say he don't make mistakes. <laughs> Look here, just tell him that you is the George Stevens of the Mystic Knights of Cedar Lodge Hall up here on Lenox Avenue. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, i tell you why you made your mistake, bud. Uh... I is the George Stevens at the Mr. Nice of the Sea Lodge Hall. Uh, what's that? Hold the phone. <laughs> what is that? He said, that's the one they want. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's, uh, too late to tell him you didn't get the letter, huh? <laughs> See, uh, they must, uh, uh, you can't take me, uh, you see, I tell you, uh, uh, you, uh, report for what? <laughs> My physical. Yeah. Yeah. See you Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> well, and it looked like I in. Oh, me. I guess I better go home and break the news to my poor wife. Yeah. And Kingfish, if I don't see you again, keep America safe for us civilians, will you? <laughs> Well, I get on in the apartment chair. I hope my little darling don't faint when I tell her the news. This is one time when I was glad I was married. It's the time when a fellow can turn to his wife for comfort and understanding. Is that you? You're no good, bum! <laughs> um, uh... Where you been all day? Honey, prepare yourself for some awful news. And I want you to be brave. What is it, George? I has been drafted by the army. Sapphire, I know this hit your heart. They has taken me away. Sapphire, say something to me. Don't just sit there with your head in your hands. What is you thinking, darling? I was just wondering how much I could rent your room for. <laughs> oh, honey, I didn't realize it would hit you this hard. You was hysterical. <laughs> George, if you want my opinion, this is the best thing that ever happened to you. I'm going into the other room and call up Mother and tell her the good news. Well, for a woman whose heart was breaking, she's putting up a brave front there already. <laughs> I bet she done flung herself on the bed and is crying her eyes out. I'll tiptoe over and crack the door. Over there, over there. George is going, George is going over there. <laughs> Oh, that's a rather a tool. Well, when my country calls and I is asked to do my duty, there's only one thing I can do. Find some way to worm out this thing. That's what I'm doing. Me, I've been walking the streets for an hour trying to figure out some way out of this mess. Oh, look who's coming. Shorty the barber. Hi, right, Shorty, did you hear the news? I've been drafted. Oh, sir, that's the most wonderful. That's the finest. That's the greatest you ever. When I got... Well, there goes the 38th parallel again. <laughs> well, Shorty, uh, if they takes me, I was going to go. Mm. But knowing the kind of soldier I'd make, I feel it's my patriotic duty to stay out of the mess. 
Well, tell Grace, I, I, I don't think you're going to pass a physical anyway. But, 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 but what you ought to do is get your family doctor to write a letter t- t- testifying to your physical condition. That's what I do. Yeah, but the trouble is I don't have no family doctor that I uh, I don't. Uh, hey, wait a minute. If I was to write them a letter myself and sign it with a doctor's name, that ought to nip the thing in the bud right there. You see, mm. hey, see that way I ain't doing no wrong. <laughs> Uh, and that way the government will have to spend none of the taxpayers' money to find out what a broke-down wreck I is. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's the idea, Kingsley. You, you, you better stay out of the thing, cause you never make the kind of soldier I was. Why, in the last war, I was one, one of the top men in, in intelligence. Shorty, you was in intelligence? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, but that is so was dangerous. I swear, I, 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 I'll never forget one, once the State Department gave me some important papers. I, I, was, I was carrying them on me when a beautiful gal rushed into my apartment, threw arms around me and started kissing me. Oh, she was lovely. <laughs> then, then all of a sudden she, she, she stopped kissing me and then I realized the papers was gone. Holy smoke, Shorty, what did you do? What did I do? I, I turned it right into, I called for the MP. Uh, I sent word to the FBI, uh, that uh, you uh, 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 went back for more papers. Yeah. Yes, Andy, I done read a letter here to my draft board like it was from a doctor. I sprinkled a little iodine on the thing to give it a medical smell. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the boy. You want to make it smell antiseptic, all right. <laughs> uh, what did you say in the letter there? Yeah, well, I'll read you the thing here. I'll give you the gust of it, sir. Yeah. I start off here, local draft board 147. Dear draftsman. <laughs> I say, uh, this is to inform you that I has made a complete examination of George Stevens and found him to be in perfect physical condition to join the United States Army, providing he don't do none of the following. March, drill, discharge firearms, riding tanks, boats, airplanes, or go within 1,500 miles of the front line. <laughs> hmm. Lest we go to war with North Dakota, you are safe. <laughs> what else you say? Uh, get a load of this next paragraph here. Uh, say, uh, I done check Mr. Stevens' eyes and find out that he got 20-20 vision. He can see 20 inches in any direction. <laughs> This affliction coupled with a loaded machine gun might prove sighted dangerous in the thick of battle, especially for our boys. <laughs> Outside of these two minor details and the fact that he is the grandson of the famous soldier Retreat Stephen, <laughs> this man is an excellent prospect for the Army. Signed yours very truly, Thurr Jackson, world famous surgeon, formerly with the Mills Brothers, Rochester, Minnesota. See, I guess. <laughs> That sound, that sound legitimate, all right. Uh, yeah, but just be on the safe side and put a P.S. on you, too, as they P.S. you. Oh, yeah. On well, taking a second look at this boy, I find out he's also suffering from cholera, bubonic plague, very, very similar causes, and hydrophobia. <laughs> he is therefore beyond the help of surgery, science, or medicine. The only hope for him is if breathing goes out of style. That's what I mean. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, you know, I don't think they're going to fall for that letter. You ought to get a real doctor to write the letter. Well, I thunk of that, Andy, but I don't think a real doctor would lay it on thick enough. You know, them doctors done took the hypocrites' oath for to stick together in the truth and all that stuff. Well, they got a pretty nasty code of ethics, them boys. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jerry. What about that fellow, Doc Walton? He ain't no real doctor, but I think he done studied medicine. Oh, yeah, call him Doc, don't Yeah, he? maybe he'd write the letter for you. Yeah, I got his number here someplace. Yeah, it is on the delinquent list. Yeah, here he is. <laughs> I call him up here, old Doc, yeah. Hey, you think he'd charge me much, Andrew? Oh, no. He'll do it cheap for you, Kingfish. I remember last winter, he offered to take out my appendix for a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Hello, Doc Walton speaking. Oh, uh, say, Doc, uh, this is the Kingfish over the large hall. Why don't you do me a favor for me? Well, I'm pretty busy right now, but I uh, guess I could help you. Uh, deal me out of this round, boys. Now, what was it, Kingfish? Uh, look, uh, I got a physical examination coming up, and I was a little worried about the, the results. Now, Doc, you know the kind of shape I in, so, I, well, <laughs> I was wondering, uh, would you sort of write up a letter about my physical condition, you know, use a lot of them medical terms, lay it on thick? Oh, wait a minute, Kingfish, that's unethical. 
I can't see your point. The doc is reporting. No, Kingfish, I just can't see it. But there's five dollars in it for you. The fog just lifted. <laughs> Well I, uh, well, I send the letter when I finish it, huh? I, I just go tell you, I'll send over there. You keep it there, Doc. And I'll send Layton over there for it this afternoon. So long, Doc. Kingfish, you say you had lightning to pick up your letter at Doc's an hour ago, huh? Yeah, just about an hour, hour and a half ago. Uh, yeah, I didn't want no slip-ups. I had lightning put it in the envelope. And take it right over to the draft board from the doctors, you see. Oh, I tell you, Andy, the... Oh, Doc Walton, come yeah, in. Yeah, hi, Hello, Doc. Hello, boys. Hi. Hello. Say, Kingfish, I'm a little worried about that letter. I hope I didn't lay it on too thick. Oh, no, no, no. Couldn't lay it on too thick. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, no, the thicker the better, Doc. Yeah, yeah. When the draft board gets your letter, they're really going to think I was a broken down wreck. Draft board? Kingfish, when you said physical, I thought you was trying to get an insurance policy. I read that you was one of the finest physical specimens I ever done see. Holy smoke, this can only mean one thing. thing left to do, that's to try the legal approach on this thing. I'll get on in here and see Calhoun, the lawyer, see if he doesn't figure out anything yet. Hiya there, Calhoun. Well, come in, Kingfish. You know, I've been mulling over your problem, and I was glad to say that I've done mulled up a solution. Yeah, you is, huh? Why, sure. You know, uh, when you were talking to El Gonquin J. Calhoun, you were talking to a man with a brain. You were talking to a man that can analyze a complicated situation at a glance. And I was happy to say that I done figured out a show-fire, foolproof way for you to stay out on it. Oh, boy, what is that, Calhoun? Join the Navy. <laughs> Join the Navy? That's a fine solution to come up with. Well, now, don't blame me. I done looked up all that army law, and nowhere, no place is there any provision for pre-induction evacuation. Pre-induction <laughs> evacuation. In other words, I was a dead inductee, huh? Yeah. You know, it's too bad it ain't like it was back in the olden days over in Europe. If a fellow was called up with the army then, he could buy a substitute to go in his place. A substitute, huh? Yeah, well, that was all right in them olden days, but... Even if they allowed it now, where would I find anybody that was stupid enough, uh, where would I find a fellow stupid, uh, stup, uh, I think I'm going to have a talk with future soldier Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They ain't never seen you down at the draft board, so Andy can use your name. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they don't know who I am. Yeah, but I just thinking, suppose this thing don't work and I ends up in the Army. Well, now, Kingfish, if you does get in the Army, you got to make the best of it. You gotta follow that noble military tradition. Take an example from what that great French field marshal said in the First World War when he was surrounded on all sides by the enemy. And the enemy was all around him and the cannons and shells was going off on the right of him and on the left of him. Well, what did the field marshal say? He jumped up in front of his men, waved his sword in the air, and, and uttered them now famous words, Je suis la liberté, honey soir la patrie. <laughs> what do that mean? Which is the quickest way out of here? <laughs> well, come in, Brother Ender. Say, Kingfish, what are you doing here? I thought so you'd be getting your physical for the Army. Uh, no, Brother Ender, uh, no, no, no physical. Uh, I ain't gonna have to go after all, Ender. I was taking advantage of that old Roman military law, the Ravioli Act of 44 AC. Uh, what is that, Kingfish? What, what, what the Ravioli Act? Is... Act? Yeah. Well, it's just that anybody that don't want to go into army, all they got to do is put up $18.25 to send somebody in his place. Hmm. It's the old Roman law, and it? Yeah, well, how come that uh, the Roman law is good over here? After all, we as Americans, not Romanians. <laughs> 
it so happened that the, the law is still on the books, and they never unpeeled the thing. It's still on there, you see. They peeled it on there. They ain't never peeled it off, so the thing is still there, ain't it? Yeah, well, I ain't never heard no law like that. Oh, a sudden, how do I take that fellow Julius Caesar? He was drafted a half a dozen times, but always got himself a substitute. Yeah. Oh, that boy fought six wars without even leaving the house. <laughs> well, tell me this, Kingfish. Uh, who did you buy as a substitute for you? Well, I'm uh, glad you reminded me of that, Ender. Uh, I forgot to look to see who they done assigned. Uh, they give me his name in this envelope here. Where is this thing? Oh. I got it on me someplace, yeah? Oh. What did I do with that official envelope? Ah, here it is. Yeah, right there. Yeah, well, why don't you open it up? I wonder who the post slob is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll open the thing. Uh, well, I'll be doggone. Yeah, tell me, Kingfish, who is the sucker? Andy, you lives on 147th Street, don't you? Yeah, Joe, do, do, do he live near me? <laughs> Andy, you was heard of Haley's Comet, uh, the type of thing that couldn't happen again in a million years? Yeah. Or a man getting hit on the head with a meteor thing that wouldn't happen again in three, four centuries, you know? Yeah, well, what about it? Well, something just happened here that makes them things look like everyday occurrences, you know? (laughs) And uh, you is my substitute. Yeah. What? (laughs) Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. You better go down there and tell them this deal is off. I ain't going in no army. Well, now, look, Andy, you was dealing with the United States government. You can't back out. All sales is final. Oh, you think got you? (laughs) Listen here, they has drafted you. They don't want Andy Brown. Yeah, well, that's the thing, Andy. When you goes in my place, you got to use my name. Just say you, George Stevens. See, oh, you got the thing there. Yeah, well, I ain't going. I'm going to hide in the attic. Oh, no, you don't. You ain't going to be no deserter. I ain't going to have the fair name of Stevens dragged in the dirt. Don't give me that stuff. <laughs> well, if I got to go, I guess there ain't nothing I can do about it. Now, now, that's the way to look at it, Andy. Now, just to make it official, I'll give you the Army Substitute Oath. Yeah. Raise your right hand, Andy. Yeah. And put your left hand on this old army blanket, sir. <laughs> this is really official, huh? Yeah, all right, now here we go. Do you, Andrew H. Brown, solemnly swear to be my substitute and keep your big mouth shut and not try to sneak out the thing? I do. Congratulations, soldier. Salute. Now, the thing for you to do is run down to the draft board and, uh... uh oh, hi, Amos. Hi. Come well, on in here. Oh, there, fellas. Uh, Andy, what you doing holding that old army blanket there? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, drop around again three, four days, Amos. We're busy right now. Uh, don't worry about the door. I'll close that. Now, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Amos. I'm glad you was here. I want to ask you something. Well, now, wait a minute, Andy. Keep your big mouth shut now. Security measures. Slip of the lip and all that stuff. Oh, oh wait a minute, yeah. What do you want to ask, man? Listen, Amos. If a fella is being drafted... Can he buy another fella for $18 to be a substitute? Andy, that is the most ridiculous thing I'd have never heard of in my life. I thought so. What you got to say to that, Kingfish? Boy, shake hands with Private Stevens. (laughs) (laughs) I heard about you being drafted for the Army. The thing I can't figure out, uh, ain't you above the age limit? Well, now, listen, Amos, I've been through all that. I talked to him on the telephone, and they say there ain't no mistake, and they're taking me. Oh, yeah, he's got to go all right, Amos. Well, now, listen, Kingfish... I was just thinking this thing over, and if you has got to go into army, there's one angle that I think you might try. You see, if I was you, I'd... George, is that you? Yes, honey, it's me, and I got some good news for you. I done took Amos's advice and done really outsmarted the army. They thought they was going to draft me. Ha, ha, ha. Well, now, George, that wasn't necessary. The draft board called and said it was all a mistake. You wasn't the George Stevens they wanted. Now, how was it you planned to outsmart them? Oh, me. Amos told me that I'd get my choice of service if I volunteered. I just listed for four years hitching the field artillery. <laughs> Now, folks, this is Amos. Tomorrow morning, there's a big thing that's going to happen. One of the best-liked personalities in radio and television is going to join the Lever Brothers family. And that's my good friend, Arthur Godfrey. Arthur begins his big-time, daytime radio show tomorrow for Homogenized Spry, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. It's 15 minutes earlier than usual in most cities. 
Your newspaper will give you the new time. Me and Andy want to welcome Arthur Godfrey for Homogenized Spry. And we want to say that if you want to hear the greatest guy in the world, you listen to him tomorrow and every weekday on this network. Only just tune in 15 minutes earlier than usual. Well, and as for ourselves, it's nice to be back again. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. with us next Sunday at the same time when Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Rinsol with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show, which is written by Joe Conley, Bob Mosier, and Bob Ross. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.